Hey folks, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I want to talk about a really good trade on Friday. <clears throat> it's one that I called out in our trading room for the inner circle. I know one of our, one of my colleagues, Gary, took a, an SPX optioned trade and uh, made quite a bit of money on a relatively small, low-risk trade. Lottery ticket trade that turned out to be winning the lottery. Anyway, I want to first talk about market profile and talk about how this trade set up, at least the way I was looking at it. Certainly they don't always work out this way, but um, if you look at the price action, this is the ES Futures market profile. I'm using a charting package that comes with Infinity Futures uh, called Sierra Charts, and I have market profile set up on this. Each one of these bars is a 30 minute uh, time window and it shows the price range of activity. Every letter is one tick of, in the price range over a 30 minute price bar. So Tuesday's activity had a pretty b bullish move up, right? So we had a breakout from a consolidation area here we had earlier in the week. We had a pretty strong breakout and closed and balanced on the highs. So prices were accepted here. Uh, the yellow lines I put on my chart are typically the points of control for time. You can see we had a 293675 uh, point of control for time on this one. And then uh, Wednesday session was a balanced day. So we had a pretty nice Gaussian distribution of trading activity. This is fair price two-way trading activity at a price level that both buyers and sellers think is very fair. We had a wide point of control area on uh, time profile, market profile. And I also have that marked at uh, 293375 on my charts. And as we come into the Thursday session, I think some of the uh, overnight activity and some of the uh, earnings activity uh, triggered a little bit of a liquidation break. Might have been some of the weaker handed traders here, you know, that were trading in this activity and, you know, decided to bail out of their trade. And we got a liquidation down to uh, this area. But as you notice, we did not take out the low, uh, the breakout low. We tested right down to the top of this consolidation range, found support, got responsive buying, and drove right back up into this area. So the Tuesday-Wednesday session, if I look at those, we had pretty much matching highs. The high of Wednesday was one tick below uh, Tuesday, and they look at that as a weak high. So weak-handed traders, uh, you know, that maybe got trapped here, found themselves up in this area, decided that, you know, they wanted to bail out of the trade and bailed out of it, but we had balanced activity. But overall, this two-day period is is what they would consider an unfinished auction. We had auction. We had no single print uh, excess to the upside, and that sets up what they call a weak high between these two days. The liquidation here found responsive buying and brought us back up, and we balanced in this space. So what is this all saying? If you look at this as a, a you know three days in a row. We have balancing price activity that's above the prior days or prior weeks area of balance. And prices are relatively uh, accepted up here. If you come into the overnight session, and the overnight I demark by the orange uh, prints, and I typically only carry one overnight session, I look at it between the close of the day before and the open of the next day's trading day. You can see we had a really wide point of control in the overnight session. And to me, that looks like pretty good support level. Uh, we had, I think, again, some earnings activity that pushed us down. We ended up breaking down below it. But notice that we did not take out the overnight low, which is this um, print down here. So we ended up having a, a liquidation break at the open. This A is the open period. We pushed down. You know, we came up a little bit. Uh, we opened in this uh, D period. We pushed up and down, and we ended up finding support. Um, you know, we, we pushed down a little bit, but we never took out the overnight low. Again, this to me says that the activity is probably more bullish, and if we don't end up breaking the overnight low and have continuation and follow through to the downside, to me, without continuation and follow through, we're not getting downside extension. And this whole value area you know, this com combined value area says this is where fair two-sided trading is going to occur. So this was a viable break. We came right back up into this area, and this sets up the trade that I'm really going to talk about. So if you look in this area, the DE or the EF and G periods, 
really never got below this low area. And to me, as I look at this, if you are traders that bought down in this area or maybe even the CD area and you know bought in these support zones, you probably are going to be ratcheting up your stops. And as I looked at this uh, developing area, my thought was an algorithm or short-term traders are going to go take these stops out, probably an algo, are going to take these stops out. We're going to get a push lower. We'll find support. And then we're going to end up getting towards new highs of the day and try to take out this Tuesday, Wednesday, week high area. I will also no note that Thursday's price activity, and I broke it down to separate, instead of collapsing the profile on top of each other, I left it uh, the Thursday session in its own 30 minute blocks. And you'll notice that we also had a poor high on, in this area. And a poor high is defined when you have you know, no, no uh, two tick excess on one of the periods above the others. In this case, the E and the J period were matching, and this also indicates to me an unfinished auction. You'll see in Friday's session we came up to the the E period came within one tick of this period. So we have a weak high here, a poor high here, and a weak high on the E period that was within one tick of the prior day's high. All of this sets up to me to be a very strong indication or, or high odds that we're going to find a way to bust through all of that activity and find our ways to new highs. So as I called out in the trading room, I thought we would get a stop run in this area. I thought we were going to get to new highs that broke this here and that was the trade I was looking for. And sure enough, we did get in the H period, we had a liquidation break, took us down to this uh, you know, point of control area that was set up by the prior day. Uh, we broke that by a tick. We came back up an I. I and H were exactly matching levels. We came right back down and set up a poor a, a poor low and a poor high in this session and took that out in the J period and then blew through it on the upside. So we really took out both a poor high and a poor low intraday on the J session. You know, probably took people that, you know, went long in this H period and put their stops too close. They were taken out here. And then we did end up going on to new highs. And I'll tell you, this trade and how this sets up really is a textbook for all the things that uh, Paul is, is taught, you know, in his Elliott Wave training course and, you know, looking at false breakout stochastics, uh, what we do with the black box breakout indicator, setting up for trades, you know, pulling back to the cloud, you know, this 34 EMA cloud that... Uh, you know, it's been added to all this. All of this really tied together in a, in a great setup and a great trade, uh, contextually looking at market profile and what's going on in the Friday activity. So what I did with the Elliott Wave indicator on a five minute chart was set up the, um, the start bar to be here on this low. You note that we had, uh, let's see, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. I'm going to spread it out a little bit here, pull this down. And you see we, we did end up finding that liquidation low support, ended up being right at a one ATR uh, move for the ES in this session. And that exactly found support. The ATR uh, levels for one and two X come out with the black box breakout indicator. <clears throat> I isolated using the Elliott wave indicator on this low. We ended up with a one, two, and up in this area, it started printing a three, and we're looking for a pullback zone in this area here, right? These color bars end up printing out relative to this wave three when we had the extension. But before I get into that, I'll just talk about, you know, we had a nice one, two. This was printing a three. We're looking for a wave four pullback. You can see we have the false breakout stochastic on the top, which indicates uh, good activity. I was calling out in the trade room looking at market profile and this stuff that I thought we were going to get a liquidation wave for pullback. We ended up getting a wave for pullback. This signal, uh, by the way, if you took that, I think it it might have one tick came in and, it, and if you kept it, you would have gotten stopped out. I don't think this one triggered and this was the, the home run trade for the end of the day. But we did get the wave for pullback. This was printing a wave three. We did get a nice wave for pullback into this zone. 
uh, which is one of Paul's pullback zones. We had the false breakout stochastic here. We had the 535 oscillator crowning and it pulled back into his uh, pullback zone. You can see by looking at it that ended up being within the 90 and uh, 140 pullback area for this this guy here. Uh, we found support, got this black box breakout indicator. Within the next candle it, it entered the trade. We never even looked at the stop. The cloud was uh, top of the cloud was support. We ended up getting really bullish price activity support. In the trade room, I did a Fibonacci extension from this high to this swing low, and this buying tail uh, candle here. And I projected a 1272 and a 1618. Again, if you had the 1 ATR indicator on your chart, you would have noticed that the 1618 and the 1 ATR levels were right up in this area, and we came right up into this zone. Uh, for ES and um, uh, you know made a really really nice uh, it's probably about a 350 400 percent times risk uh, type trade on the ES the SPX options trade I took about earlier uh, Gary my colleague took the 2935 2945 dollar call spread I think he paid about 70 cents on it and if you took it right to the close, it closed at about four dollars and uh, I think seventy or eighty cents, something like that. Uh, and you know, on a seventy cent trade, um, you know, closing at four seventy, so that's basically four dollars of gain on a seven dollar trade. And a five lot would have made you two grand on a let's see, three hundred fifty dollar risk. So that was an absolutely spectacular. Um, Spectacular trade for actually it was a five lot trade. Yeah, it would have made you twenty five hundred bucks or two thousand bucks on a five lot. So you would have had uh, five hundred shares of SPX equivalent and made four dollars on that. So it's two grand on a three hundred fifty dollar risk options trade for SPX. You had the same trade in SPY. Um, you know you could have gotten in it for. Uh, very cheap, especially if you really would have taken the risk of buying it on this pullback and even buying it out of the cloud, not even waiting for this signal here. All of those trades were absolutely home run trades. And, uh, you know, looking at mar market profile context, kind of thinking about what traders would be doing, looking at where stops might be, you know, hitting stop runs, grabbing the trade instead of uh, chasing it, thinking that the market's going to break. Um, you know, you would have had a really, really nice uh, closing trade on Friday. So anyway, hope that helps. Um, and I hope you guys have great trading next week. Oh, one last thing I'll point out. Since we did close on near the highs and we ran out of time during the day, I do expect the early, uh, you know, unless news comes in over the weekend, I do expect we're going to have some continued price action to the upside. We have the all-time high here in the futures uh, right in this uh, 2947 area and I do think that uh, you know we're just too close to that to not take it out especially with some of the earnings trades I've talked about in the uh, weekend recap video and the setup for next week on the indexes with uh, Apple and Google okay folks hope that helps um, take care and have a good week trading next week